nerdlings. Oh. This is my friend Tina. Hi. She is being quarantined with us, <laughs> so she has very graciously offered to help me with this video. Many of you have asked me advice on how to get your wigs to stay, whether you're LARPing or cosplaying or, you know, wearing Lolita and you're wearing a wig and people have issues with them sliding back or not staying. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways on how to prep your hair to go under a wig so that way your wig will not slide and I will show you how to pin it so your wig stays down. So let's go! Yay! Yay. We're going to start with pin curls. Now pin curls are good for short hair. I used them a lot when I had my pixie cut and my bob, my short bob, and layered haircuts. This is very, very good because it keeps everything contained. Pin curls make a really great anchor for you to pin things into. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by wrapping a section of hair around two fingers, then place it flat on the skull and you're going to crisscross two pins to make an X to hold everything in place. The red lines represent where you place your bobby pins. You are then going to do pin curls all over your entire head. I like making sure that I have a pin curl at each temple and at both sides of the nape of my neck. It makes a very good place for you to anchor your wigs down to. The point of a good preparation under your wig is so that everything looks natural and as realistic as possible. Doing these preps, you are trying to get your hair as flat to your head so that it looks realistic. Tina now has pin curls all over her entire head. Your hair prep should also help hold your wig cap on. You can also pin your wig cap into your pin curls, which helps anchor that in place even more so that your wig cap doesn't slide. Your wig cap should sit just behind your hairline, not in front of it, and you can use the end of a rat tail comb to scoop any baby hairs up into the wig cap so it holds it better. You can also use a little hairspray or gel if your baby hairs are being very stubborn and don't want to stay up in the wig cap. When pinning your wig cap, I like to direct my pins forward and then flip them around to go under the wig cap and into the pin curls. Wrapping your hair is especially good for long hair. You're going to start by making four pin curls, one at each temple and one on each side of the nape of your neck. This placement is going to allow you to have something to anchor the wig into while keeping the rest of your hair as flat as possible. This will help keep the back of your head from becoming very bulky with hair just piled up on top of your head. Instead it will be wrapped nice and neatly. To begin the wrap, you're going to take a section from behind the ear on one side and wrap it across the back of the head to the other side and pin it in place. A section on the opposite side of the head is then going to be taken and wrapped in the opposite direction behind the head to the other side where you first started and then you're going to pin that into place. Continue alternating a piece from each side and wrapping them in opposite directions, keeping them as smooth as you can and pinning them down so that they don't move. 
Tina's hair is on the finer side and it's not quite as long, but if you have long hair, this definitely, definitely comes in handy. Just make sure your sections aren't too thick. You'll end up having a swirl all the way around your head. When you put your wig cap on, everything should be nice and flat and you have your anchors to pin things into. I feel like braids are the most commonly used method. The thing about braids is you don't want them to become bulky. So you have to be very careful about how much hair you have and how thick your braids are and how flat you can get them to your head. So be very careful if you are using braids. I like doing Dutch braids because they create a very slight ridge for your wig cap to hold on to. Now you can always combine different methods. Often I will do two pin curls at my temples and then I will split the rest of my hair in half and do two braided pigtails that I then wrap in the back. I feel like this gives me better anchors in the front to pin my wig into while the braids give me a nice ridge in the back to hold my wig cap and the back of my wig in place. When I do braids, I try to keep them lower to the side of the hair by your ear because it creates more of that ridge that's going to help hold your wig cap in place. I then crisscross them and pin them in place so that they are up and out of the way. None of these preps have to be perfect. They're going under a wig cap and under a wig, so if your part down the middle of your head isn't perfect, or if your braids aren't the most beautiful braids, it doesn't matter. Pop your wig cap on, tuck in your hairs, pin it in place, and we are ready to put on the wig. I will be using my Alice in Wonderland wig that is very historically Victorianly based, so lots and lots and lots of curls. If you're putting a wig on someone else, you want to be behind them. You want to have them gently grab the front of the wig and hold it to their forehead while you lower it over the back. You're then going to walk around to the front, find the ear tabs, and make sure that it is centered and evenly placed on their head. I like using what I call wig pins to pin a wig in place. They are bigger than hairpins and if you crisscross them, which I will demonstrate, they hold things in place really, really well. They are twice the size of bobby pins and hair pins. To start, I'm going to use a hair pin to hold down the front of the sideburns to help hide the fact that this is a wig. If you slide the pin within the grain of the hair, the direction that the hair is going, you can slide it in and the pin absolutely disappears and you don't even see it. These pins are not anchoring pins, they are more to help you hide your own natural sideburns and help make the wig look more flush and realistic to your skin. Here we see the blue pin sliding in with the grain of the hair. Now to anchor our wig down, you're going to slide a hairpin going up towards the back of the head and then the second one will go down towards the face. They're going to then interlock and crisscross and lock your wig into place. Now sometimes it takes a second to find a spot where the pin will want to go through the wig, 
and you want to hide these pins as much as possible. You're going to do this on both sides of the top of the head. You're also going to pin the nape of the neck. You're going to get the pin through the wig, point it down, get it under the wig cap, and then flip it up. It's going to anchor into not only the wig cap, but the braid, and it's going to hold the bottom of your wig in place very snugly. So you're going to have your crisscross anchors on top of the head, your hiding pins on the sideburns, and your anchor pins at the base of your nape. You can then pop on any accessories you have, and ta-da! You are now wearing your wig. Some people may find they want to put more anchors into their wig. Definitely give your head a shake, feel if anywhere feels loose, and have fun! I hope this helps you guys. I hope this gives you a couple options on how to set your hair, and I hope that um, all of your wigs stay on and nothing ever slides around. Let me know if this works, if you try it out and you liked it. If you have any other ways that you like to set your hair, let me know because there's always new things to learn and share with each other. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm.